Jamaica Labour Party's councillor caretaker for the South Borough Division in Portmore, St. Catherine Lennox Hines, was fatally shot by gunmen yesterday evening. The police have confirmed that Hines, who was also a motor vehicle examiner, was killed under a bridge along Marcus Garvey Drive in St. Andrew. It is reported that Hines was waiting in traffic when two men rode up on a bike and opened fire at him before riding away. The incident caused a backup of traffic along the thoroughfare, forcing the police to issue an advisory for motorists to divert from the area. Deputy Superintendent for the St. Andrew South Police Division, Stacey Ann Powell, gave our news team an update on the incident. Currently, the Major Investigation Division is leading in this investigation. We are able to say at this time that Mr. Lennox Hines would have died as a result of this incident and one individual is currently at the hospital being treated. At this time, I would love to encourage the citizens of this country who might have witnessed this incident to call the police. This can be done through 119-311 or the Hunts Bay Police 923-711 and they can share any information that they have with regards to this murder and shooting. The information we have is that Mr. Hines was driving his SUV and upon reaching the Marcus Garvey Drive vicinity, the toll, Portmore Toll Road, he was pounced upon by two men on a motorcycle. The pillion, it is alleged, opened fire at the vehicle in which he was driving, resulting in him receiving gunshot wounds. Unfortunately, he passed away. However, the other occupant of the motor vehicle is being treated at hospital at this time. No motive has been ascertained at this time. Investigations are ongoing. General Secretary of the Jamaica Labour Party, JLP, Dr. Horace Chang, is expressing condolences to the family and colleagues of Councillor Caretaker Hines, whom he says was in the middle of planning his wedding when he was fatally shot by gunmen yesterday evening. He added that the party has been in contact with St. Catherine East Central's Member of Parliament, Alando Terralong, to assist in supporting the family during this time of sorrow. Meanwhile, Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie has strongly condemned the murder of Lennox Hines, Councillor Caretaker for the South Borough Division in St. Catherine. Mr. McKenzie explained that the killing is absolutely brazen and brutal. And while the motive for this heinous crime is yet unknown, it is clear to him that these criminals who shot down Mr. Hines in the evening traffic on Marcus Garvey Drive wanted to make a public show of the evil that they committed. He added that this incident is another terrible example of the violence that is afflicting our society and the combined determination of the security forces and ordinary citizens right across the country is critical in turning this situation around. He also expressed great sorrow to his fiancée and to his children whom he said are in total shock at this time. Minister McKenzie said, quote, Councillor Hines was the embodiment of sincerity in service and he was waiting for the opportunity to become their official representative. Sadly, he has been savagely torn away from his family and from the wider community, end quote. And as tributes continue to pour in, General Secretary of the People's National Party, Dr. Dayton Campbell, is expressing sympathies to the family and colleagues of the JLP's councillor caretaker for the South Borough Division, Lennox Hines, who was fatally shot last evening. The General Secretary notes the tragic circumstances that led to his death and is calling for the perpetrators of the murder to be swiftly brought to justice. Still tonight, shortly after JLP councillor Lennox Hines was fatally shot on Marcus Garvey Drive, a similar shooting incident took place on Constant Spring Road. 
Regarding this incident, it has been reported that a motorist was shot and injured while leaving Twin Gates Plaza on Constant Spring Road close to 9 p.m. Eyewitnesses say the motorist was pounced upon by men traveling on a motorcycle as he waited at the traffic light at the plaza's exit. He was rushed to the hospital by a passing motorist. And the coverage on crime continues as it has been reported that at least 50 bullets were fired by the gunmen who killed three persons and injured two others during the attack at Rose Heights in St. James on Wednesday. The police stated that upon processing the crime scene, 49 spent shell casings of 5.56 bullets which are used in M16 rifles and one 9mm spent shell casing were found. Those killed in the attack were identified as Chadwell Bomb Brian Fraser, otherwise known as Chad, 27 of Glen Devon, Chamario Chippy Calvin, 24 of Ball Ground in Rose Heights, and Tonian Two Fly Reed, 26 of Jarrett Terrace, all in St. James. Among the injured are a 15 year old boy from Rose Heights and a 27 year old man from Green Pond. Reports are that at approximately 4.20 p.m., the five were gathered along Marl Road in the community when a silver Toyota Axia motor car drove up. Masked men alighted from the vehicle with rifles and subsequently opened gunfire at the group. Further to the story, the men made their escape in the motor vehicle in the area. After the shooting subsided, it was revealed that all five had been shot. They were rushed to the hospital where Fraser was pronounced dead and the others admitted. Calvin and Reed later died while undergoing treatment. Stemming from an incident that has gone viral, the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line has confirmed that its ship, Harmony of the Seas, crashed into the Falmouth Pier in Trelawney as it attempted to dock yesterday. In videos posted to social media, cruise ship passengers could be heard screaming as the ship made contact with the concrete mooring pylon. A statement from a Royal Caribbean representative read, quote, During arrival in Falmouth, Jamaica, Harmony of the Seas made contact with an extension part of the dock, end quote. The spokesperson also reported that the ship sustained only minor injuries to its stern, which was repaired the same day. It's unclear how much damage was done to the pier and what provisions will be made to repair it. No injuries were reported. The ship left Jamaica at approximately 4 p.m. yesterday as it continued its sailing schedule. Still tonight, angry residents, taxi operators, and concerned outpatients at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in Montego Bay, St. James, staged a protest outside the hospital's gate this morning. This in protest over an alleged attempt by the St. James Municipal Corporation to close down a popular food establishment in the Mount Salem community. Manager of the establishment, Dane Little, said in early February he got a court order to appear in the Supreme Court as the establishment should be closed due to it posing a hazard to the community. In February, I get um, a court, some court order to, to come to the Supreme Court because you have a matter in front of the Supreme Court. And, um, you know, we're just putting up um, you know, a good fight. You understand, because this business is necessary. You understand, it's here supporting the community, supporting everybody, employ a lot of people over the years. And that is what we just want to continue to do. You understand? It is for the community, and we're just fighting that it can be remain for the community and the, the parish overall. You understand? I never have any problem with the, as I said, with the hospital. You know, the only thing. When they just started to fight, the CEO at that time, Mr. Smiker, he called me and letting me know that, you know, the parish council is pushing for him to, to join them, to remove me. And he called me, he even get up out of his chair and tell me to sit and tell me that he will never support them because he go to the doctor, he go to the nurse, he go to all the re relevant department 
and everyone is supporting me. So he said he would be a fool to, to join with them. You understand? Because he see nothing wrong with my business. You understand? This is the cleanest business you can find around town. Mr. Little also said that this all started when he decided to support a candidate from the People's National Party. We are coming together today to, to stand for our justice. You understand? Because um, I've been here from about nine years old. You understand? And I, from I've been here, I never have any problem with the hospital, with the police, with the, the health authorities, all the parish council. You know, since since 20, 2016, when um, I support the PMP candidate. You understand? So from my support the PMP candidate, I start to have this issue. You understand? It doesn't make any sense because um, it is my right to support who I want to support. Workers of the facility urged the relevant authorities to save the business so that the over 30 employees can keep their jobs. It's a little demonstration. We are workers of this facility and we want the judge or whoever is in charge of this injunction today to know that this establishment has not created any problems. We have never gotten any report from the health facilities, the health authorities, the police or the hospital. This facility employs over 30 persons and we are demonstrating because we can't afford in this pandemic to go home to our families. What are they expecting us to go home and say to our children and our people who benefit from us? Or we are the breadwinners. What are we supposed to do? Go home and cry? Go home and pick up the gun? Start violence? St. James is already plagued with violence and we don't want it to go any further. So I think what the authorities need to do is to shift their focus. Focus on the crime that is plaguing this parish. Focus on the hospital which cannot be completed even today. Focus on the amount of persons, patients over the hospital that cannot get a bed to sleep on instead of majoring on the minor. The concerned citizens say the establishment, Jam Rave Restaurant and Groceries, which had been located outside the hospital's gate since 1989, supports the entire Mount Salem community with food and is the main outlet where a patient at the Cornwall Regional Hospital can get a hot meal to purchase. I've known the owner of this facility for years. This establishment has been here for years. It provides job to the community, both inside and outside the community. I personally know of three persons related to me that is working here. And they were at home sitting down, not doing any work, and they are now employed to this facility, providing for their families. When you shut down this facility, what, what are you telling them to do? To go home and sit down, how do they feed their kids? How do they pay rent? What are they gonna do? And it's hard to get job work in a pandemic and he's providing employment. So what's the problem? They're saying that it's affecting traffic. Where is it affecting traffic? It's not in the middle of the road. The place is clean, it's well sanitized. Nobody complains about this place other than the ones who are trying to shut it down. It makes no sense. We you know the end all along now and we have this local business going on here. And when we come from hospital and we're hungry, we can't stop here at 2 o'clock anytime to get any little thing. Then you have a gunman. I had that with them to focus on because too much crime. And so when you shut down our um, business place like this, when you people them, they come from hospital, what do you expect people them to do? Eh? And this what is taking place here is not fair. It's not. I, I don't accept it because I, I buy food here. Whenever. Uh, I go over the hospital and come in, I stop here, I buy food, I buy soup, I love buy my soup, yes, so. I understand people from Marble come here, so, you see, so what a take place, no fear. We will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts.